What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're gonna to be breaking down how wide receivers can beat every form of DB coverage and DB leverage. So on this channel, we talk a lot about coverage, talk a lot about leverage, but we're gonna go over every single one on this play, on this specific video. So we're gonna be talking about head up aggressive press, then we're gonna talk about inside shade press, then we'll move on to outside shade press, then we'll talk about inside shade off man, and then outside shade off man and how you guys can structure your routes accordingly. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver, and you want to train with us this off season. Check out that very first link in the description below. We have five more states on our United States camp tour. We're going to be coming out this weekend to Chicago, Illinois, then Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, and then Los Angeles, California. So if you guys would like to get some work in with us for two whole days, check out that very first link in the description below. We would love to have you out to one of our off season camps. Two days, not 150, 200 kids. It's going to be actual work, actual teaching. So very first link below you guys let's get started so first things first here there's a clip from justin jefferson head up coverage db wants to be physical how do i go about this there's a common question that we get asked a lot and one of the best releases you can use is something we call a split release so a split release is great because it helps you get to a balanced position and an explosive position so i'm going to play this full speed so a split release exactly how it sounds pretty much just splitting your feet you're bringing your back foot up even with your front foot and your front foot is going out so you're just splitting and freezing this db for a split second so he comes up here, splits, DB wants to lunge at him. It is an easy shrug off because we are in a balanced spot. So we got to come to on every single release, fellas, when I got head up press, whether he's physical or whether he's not physical, I have to get a read on him and I have to come to balance in case he decides to throw hands. So if this DB was like off maybe about a yard and he wasn't going to get physical and lunge, I could still use a split release because he's head up. Reason why I'd want to use a split release because he's head up is I could go either in or I could go out with a split release. So that's one of my favorite releases to use when that DB's in head up coverage. Now, he decides to go with this split release, and the great part about it is if you guys can get lower than this DB and you guys could get an explosive base, explosive pad level, it's very, very tough to stop, right? Because this DB's hoping that Justin Jefferson will just stand right there, stand nice and tall. He'll be able to jam, knock him into Thielen, and ruin the play. But when you guys do that split release and you guys can get low, worst case, scenario he gets hands but because he's in a good base and because he's in a good pad level those hands don't kill him he could just move forward he could just drive off those legs and get off of that jam so make sure fellas when you're against that head up aggressive db you got to have a plan now if his is not stack coverage and you're maybe kicked out wide and this DB's right in your face, what's another release you could use? You could use something called a step back release if you're on the ball. So a step back is if he's lined up like this and rather than splitting, he just takes a little step back, just takes a little step back, tries to create a little bit more space between him and the DB, and then we can make my move and go. So make sure when it's head up, aggressive press, fellas, he's right in front of your face. You got to have a plan. If it's stack, I like that split release. If he's maybe, if we're kicked out wide, we don't got to worry about necessarily spacing on the stack and letting that, me being the point man and getting off the ball quickly, I could use something like a step back. So I'm going to play this thing again, full speed. Great job by Jefferson keeping a good pad level and using that split release where you hesitate for a split second to get off that head up press. Okay, so now we got inside shade coverage and this receiver is going to be running a corner route. So immediately off the get, and again, we do some videos on this page where we talk like a lot about, it's like a quiz style video, right? Where it's like, okay, we got inside shade. Well, how would you run this specific route? That's how you guys should think of these videos as well. You see this look, I always pause the clip and I always kind of give information before I play it. You should be thinking that. How would I run this route against this? How would I do it against this situation? So we have this inside shade coverage with an outside breaking route. A lot of wide receivers, what they will do in this case is, oh, he's inside shade. I'm just going to go take off and run. But if you just take off and run, that is exactly what he wants you to do. Three things off the line. You got to know what route you're running. You got to know what read you are. And you got to know the reason why a DB is playing like he is. So he's inside shade. Why is he playing inside shade? He doesn't want to give up the inside. He wants to do whatever possible to force you outside because the sideline is his help. So a lot of receivers will think, oh, he's inside shade. I'm just going to go outside. DB will get hands right on your hip, squeeze you to the sideline. And the thing about releases, it's all about keeping timing and keeping spacing. And if you let that DB reroute you and squeeze you to the sideline, you have no spacing for the quarterback to lead you on an outside breaking route. No different than an out route, no different than a comeback route. So we have to threaten him where he doesn't want me to go if I'm running an outside breaking route. So let's play this thing full speed. So this wide receiver does exactly that. Threatens him inside, keeps the spacing outside, and then breaks this thing right off. That is textbook and how you guys would work this route. 
So when we come off the line too, fellas, it's no different than an outside breaking route. I mean, excuse me, it's no different than running an inside breaking route against inside coverage. You would do the exact same thing. Your release, the movement you take is all predicated on his leverage. A lot of times people ask me, hey, does this release work well for this route? And it's not necessarily about the routes. It's about what the DB shows you pre-snap. That's how we structure my plan. And it has to happen fast. So this wide receiver, he's running a corner. You would do it the same way if you're running a post. He comes off the line, he attacks him, he threatens his leverage, but that just forces forces the DB to stay honest. He won't just give up the inside easy, so he has to keep that leverage, which keeps my spacing to the outside. Now, when it comes to top of the route, you might ask me, well, why would I do this if it was an inside breaking route? He's inside and I have to run this way. Let's call it a post, for example. I would do this because I can run, I can get separation on an inside breaking route with an outside release, no problem. And it's about having a plan, but also being able to react. So, no matter what, whether what, no matter what leverage it is, our goal should be what off the line against man. It should be to restack. It should be to get him on my back hip. I give a little move and then I'm off on the route. Or I got to have a reactionary plan. So if I can't restack and this DB plays it well, like he does right here, if it's an outside breaking route, what should I do? I should lean into him. I should use my upper body. I don't want to extend with my arm. I should lean into him with my shoulders and hips, break it off. And guess what? Because I leaned into him, I was able to create a little gap and I still maintain my space for the quarterback to throw me open. No different than if I restacked him. Now, what if it was a post and this DB plays it just like this and he's running hip to hip with me? You got to have a plan, right? If it's a post, obviously, ideally, we would like to restack, you know, throw a move, throw a little head fake. But if he's right there hip to hip, what can I do? I could throw him by. So I could take that inside hand and at the break point, I could swat his hip, I could swat his shoulder and slip back underneath. So that is the way you would attack that inside press, fellas. Whether it's a comeback, an out route, a corner, or whether it's a post, a dig, a fade, whatever it is. You gotta have a plan. Number one goal is to threaten his leverage and number two goal, take care of him at the top of the route. Separation is won and lost at the top of the route. Timing and spacing is won and lost at the release. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver, threatening the DB leverage, keeping that space to the sideline, and using that lean technique. So now, next coverage, outside shade press. And you have to run a corner route, same exact route we were talking about. So now, what do you think his main goal should be here? Now, three things we got to identify. What route, are we ha- what route do we have? What read are we? And since it's an outside breaking route, it's probably going to be a first read or maybe, maybe like a second read if it's like a smash situation. But First read or second read, so it means we got to go quick. Second thing, what route, or what route are we? Got to go quick, and then why is he playing the certain way he's playing? So he's outside shade, right? What is he trying to give up usually? Or what is he not trying to give up? The outside. So he does not want to let you run a corner, run an out route, run a fade. So if you guys try to force the outside release, this DB will get hands, and guess what he's going to do? Squeeze you to the sideline. And a good DB probably won't even open up. He'll stay square the entire time and just throw you to the sideline. You see it a lot. When guys are working one-on-ones, guys are working seven-on-seven, when it's maybe not the most realistic environment, guys will force releases, they'll force routes. That's not what we want to do, fellas. You got to understand that we need to take what he gives me because it is about timing and spacing against press coverage. If this DB screws up timing, he did his job. So this is textbook what this wide receiver does right here. Attacks his leverage, takes the inside release, is able to restack and give a move. That is perfect what we want to do because this is no different than what we were talking about in the last example where you have an inside shade guy and you got to run a post. It's all about the top of the route. So all you got to do, and there's a million different ways you could attack his leverage and attacking leverage means attacking where he's lined up. Like he's shaded outside. Okay. He's outside leverage. I want to attack his leverage. That means I want to attack outside. So he attacks him outside and does a pretty damn good job selling it, stepping outside his frame, hips and shoulders are outside. He has to honor that because he will get ripped in film and ripped by his coach if he gives up a free outside release because he doesn't have any help over there. When he's playing outside shade, he's got help inside. That means there's probably safety help inside. So he wants you to run inside. He wants you to just go run a post because you're going to go run right into his safety and he's got you. That's exactly what the coverage is designed for. So if we can threaten him where he doesn't have help, that's going to widen him. And guess what? Now I kept the same spacing. Now I'm right back on that line. And now I could work to restack and give a move like a rocker step and get him to bite. And then I got all kinds of space for the quarterback to throw me open. Or if he plays it well, let's say that DB's a little bit closer. I could swat him by on his shoulder, swat him by on his hip and cut back underneath 
and catch that ball in front of him. But it's all about giving that QB the same amount of space to the sideline that he had pre-snap when I lined up. That is what you need to do against that outside shade press. So make sure that we attack him, fellas. And then if you had to run a post route, you had to run a dig route, you would attack him, move him off platform, get back up vertical to widen yourself from that safety help. If you just run inside when he's got po- when he's got safety help and he's outside shade, he will get hands on your hip, force you to that safety, and make it a very tight window for your QB. Let's play this thing again full speed. Great job attacking that DB's outside shade, working that rocker, and giving the quarterback space. Okay, so now we're going to move on to off-man coverage. So when I have off-man inside shade, and I got to run like a post, or this is more like a dig route, I would say. It could be either or, but um, it's the same concept for either one. What do you think you'd want to do here? So when we had to run a post route or an inside breaking route versus inside shade press, right? Or like that corner, for example, what were we taught to do? He's inside shade, so he's not going to give up the inside. So I would attack his leverage, then I'd work outside, try to restack, try to throw by, and then slip back on the post. It's all about spacing. Same thing when he's an off man right? So he's taught to never give up the inside when he's off man inside shade. So a lot of wide receiver coaches, a lot of wide receivers will say, oh, when you got that, just stem him inside and attack his midline. But guess what? When you stem this DB, what's he going to do? Because he's inside leverage, he's going to keep his leverage. So you would want to split him in half. You would want to attack his outside shoulder to get him to flip. So let's play this thing full speed. So he comes off the line, he gives a little tempo change, attacks the outside shoulder, and then is able to slip back underneath. This is such a common mistake that guys will make. They think, oh, I'm just going to square him up and he's going to backpedal and then I'll break in front of him. Well, A, if you square him up sometimes, that might screw up spacing of the play. You got to keep spacing and you got to keep timing. Number two, that DB is not supposed to backpedal. So you square him up, he's just going to weave. We need to make sure that we are selling vertical and the goal is to get him to flip his hips. So where this wide receiver attacks is the outside shoulder. He gives a little tempo change. He bursts up, uses a little rocker step, get that DB to bite on the fade, get him to bite on the out route. Whatever it is, I am threatening him to where he has all this space. And that is where I can create separation and win on the route. It is all about inside shade, inside route. He's sitting like seven to eight yards off. Let's go attack that outside shoulder. I could maybe, there's a couple different ways you could do it too, but ultimately the end of the day, the thing that is going to work is when you threaten his outside shoulder. You could maybe stem him initially. You could maybe stem and then burst up. You could maybe burst up hard. You could maybe give a speed. You could maybe burst up, throw a rocker step, tempo, then throw a rocker step, whatever it is, but the same concept remains attacking the outside shoulder to flip him. I hope everybody gets that. I hope that makes sense. Now, if he's inside shade and you had to run like a 10 yard out, it would just be about keeping space for yourself. That's easy money, right? So what would you do? What gets him to weave inside? Attacking his leverage, right? So you would stem him inside. He would weave inside. You might give him a rocker step fake like you're running a post. And then bam, you got all this space to work outside to run a fade, to run a corner, or to run an out route. So that's the main key when you're facing inside shade off man. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by Thayer Thomas selling that outside shoulder and getting him to open up his hips. All right, so now we've got a little bit of off man coverage and you got to run a corner. Now we're looking at two off man coverage situations here and then that'll be the end of the video. So he's outside shade five yards off. Main thing is that he's got to run like a 10 yard corner. So he's sitting at five and we got to run, we got to make the break at like 10. So, or 10 to 12. So if he's sitting at five like this, you would treat this like it was more so press. So what do you think he does? You would want to attack his leverage, make him think you're going outside, take the inside release, try to restack or do what? Throw by. No different. Just because he backed up a few yards does not mean that anything changes. The only thing that would change is you would maybe do a release that's a little bit longer. Rather than him being pressed up and you do like a wide step or a little bit of a quick chat or foot fire threat outside, you would just close the distance with him and then do the exact same thing. Just because he backed up a couple yards doesn't mean anything changes. When it, ch- it changes when he's sitting right at the break point, and we will get to that on the next clip. So this is a textbook right here. Tax the leverage, gives him a move, works to restack, gives the move inside, and then look at all the space he created for himself for the QB to throw him open. That is what we want. You see, he lines up with maybe about 
I don't know, 20 yards to the out of bounds, like 20 yards till he's out of bounds. And at the top of the route, he still has about 20 yards till he's out of bounds. He does not go up to the DB, square him up, try to give a move and force the outside, then restack, then break. Because you're just going to get squeezed to the sideline, guys. He does not want to give up the outside. When a DB has a split cut, or when a receiver has a split cut down and he's close to the, side, the hash marks, he ain't going to give that up, fellas. you got to understand. So he does not want to give up the outside in this situation. So I got to take what he gives me. And that's the inside release. Let's play this thing again, full speed. Great job attacking leverage, working back up top, and then accelerating to go win that route to the corner. So now, Last but not least, this is where he's sitting like right at the depth, right? So he's going to come off the line. He's got a 10-yard out route. And um, this DB is going to backpedal like right off the gate. So this could be like he's sitting at 10. This could be like he's going to backpedal with you. But if you have to run this 10-yard out, outside shade off, man, no different than the post route we talked about. You would want to attack inside shoulder, get him to flip his hips, and then slip back underneath. So let's play at full speed. So we attack the inside shoulder, we're selling vertical, snap this thing off, throw him by, and then win on this route. That's textbook, that's all you gotta do. You just gotta make sure that we are making him think I am running a seam, I'm running a deep post, I'm running a dig, because he wants to force you inside. He will never let you outside. So if your game plan is I'm going to square him up, he is going to weave and keep the leverage. You're going to break this off with not as much space as you had before, and he's going to be right on your hip. Get him to flip. Get him to flip his hips by selling vertical. Come off the ball fast. Come off the ball in full stride. Put the head down and break suddenly because that is what gets this DB to flip his hips. Now, what would you do if you had to run a post and it was outside shape? Pretty simple. What's gonna, what would have gotten him to widen? How do we not want to run the out route? You don't want to attack him. You don't want to square him up. So if you had to run a post, the only reason he's outside shade is because he has help. So if he has help, he, if you're running a post, he wants you to just run because then he could be right on your hip and force you to this guy. So you would attack him. You would square him up because then what is he going to do? He's going to widen. And guess what? You created a bigger window to run that post route. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope this, this teaches you a few things just about what you need to do and how it's a lot simpler than you think when you're facing different kinds of DB coverage. Just play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job attacking inside shoulder and getting that DB to flip his hips so we can accelerate out and have space for that QB. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you want to come get some work in with us, we're traveling out to Chicago, Dallas, Nashville, Salt Lake City, Los Angeles, and that's going to be the remainder of our tour for this year. So again, very first link in the description below, fellas. We'd love to have you out to one of our camps. I'll see you guys next time.